So the big question is this, how do most agents who struggle to get the information that most successful agents hoard to themselves grow and prosper without this information? That's the big question and this video cast is the answer. Welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. I'm your host, Pat Hyben. And now for the review of the day. Okay, I got a uh, review here for Six Steps to Seven Figures, the audio version. It's funny, you know, my audio version outsells my paperback version or my uh, ebook like four to one. Audio is really big now. And um, so anyways, five stars from Michael. And Michael says, a must read or a must listen for anyone interested in real estate. I will definitely listen to this audio book again. Well, thank you, Michael, for the six steps to seven figures audio book review. Keep the comments coming, guys. I love them. And remember, I eat feedback for breakfast. So give me a one star review if you want or a five star review if you want. I don't care. And the more reviews we get, the better guests we get. So please subscribe first and then leave us a review or wherever you're listening. Hi, Rockstar Nation. I have a great returning guest. Hadn't been on in a while. Our last episode was 341. So it's been over two years because uh, now we're well over 641. We're close to 700 and, and um uh, uh, I'm glad to be able to get her back because she is a superstar and she is doing some really cool things uh, today in many areas of the real estate business. So without further ado, welcome back, Karen Cooper. Hey, Pat. I'm so glad to be back. It, it has been a really long time. Hey, Karen, why don't you uh, tell everybody a little bit about yourself so they can get to know you better? Okay, sure. So um, I'm Karen Cooper. I am the owner of the Platinum Group Real Estate Team. Um, we're affiliated with a brokerage called Pearson Smith Realty. We are in Northern Virginia. Um, we're about at 90 minutes outside of Washington, D.C. So kind of the D.C. metro area is our market. Um, I have been a full-time licensed realtor for 16 years now. Uh, spent a little portion of my time. I, I've kind of hit every... Um, every avenue in my career. I've been on a Rainmaker team, I've been an individual agent, and of course now a team owner. Um, but I also spent some time as a managing broker, so that gave me some interesting insight in my business. Um, my, my team consists of 23 women, we're all moms, and uh, we have uh, four support staff, my business partner and I, and 17 agents. And uh, I am a mom, I have three sons, and uh, priority, I, I really prioritize my family time, it's my favorite thing. Wow, that so many questions there. First, my first thing is right. Twenty three women, yeah, all moms. Now I know you'll say, "Oh, it's not on purpose or it's not conscious," uh, but <laughs> it's, it's, you know, is that a concern? Is that almost like is that legal? Like, can you? <laughs> I know it's just a team, and I'm joking with you, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what? I will. It it now it is on purpose. Um, it did not used to be on purpose. Um, it, it just, it's just the kind of the way we put together and these, some of these women I have been friends with and I have worked together for 10, 12 years. Um, and, but what we have found is as our culture has grown as a team, um, to, to introduce a, a male influence into that, I think would completely change the current culture that we have. So um, not to say that someday down the road, things might change, but um, for right now, this works really well for us. Wow. What about a gay male? Uh, I don't know that that would matter, um, <laughs> honestly, one way or the other. Well, tell but, me about it. So what do you mean by it then? So, Well, I, I mean, I, I think because we're all women, because we're all moms, we can really relate to each other. And there are struggles that I have in my business that you didn't have in your business. And, um, you know, I, what I find, you know, you're a parent and what I find with parenting is there's always a default parent, right? So there's always one person who's the one who is, um, you know, when something goes wrong, they're the one that kind of, kind of deals with it by default. Um, not that you're not an active parent otherwise. And, uh, that tends to be the mom. And so we, we just have a different set of challenges and struggles. I think being women in real estate, being moms in real estate. Um, and so I don't know that men can always relate to that necessarily. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, it's kind of cool. It's kind of, uh, it's kind of a neat little niche. So, um, all right. So let's get down to some nitty gritty. So how many houses did you sell last year? Uh, last year, I personally sold 59 um, and my team sold uh, close to 300. Wow. 
Okay, so this is crazy. So, uh, so you're still in production, right? Yes. Okay. So, and you have your team with one other partner, right? Correct. Okay. So, first of all, what was I'm going to break this up a little bit. So, what was the GCI, your e, your ECI, as we like to call it, your ego commission income for your team? Yeah, so for my team, so, so I don't have the complete gross for my team because we're very lucky um, in that our brokerage pays the splits out. So I can tell you the gross that came into my team. Um, and so the gross for 2017, um, we had, um, let's see, we did 90 million in volume. And um, actually, I don't have the total gross that came into us. I can tell you that this year so far, our team has grossed 1.6. Um, you probably did, you know, 2 million, 2.5 million, somewhere in there gross. Yeah, right? 1.1 1, 1 .1 came into us, and that was after paying splits to our agents. What split are you on? Um, it, well, we don't have a split with our broker. We control 100% of the commission. So, uh, splits for our agents range between 50, 50, and 90, 10. Oh, I see what you're saying. So cost yeah. of goods sold. So your, your broker pays the agents, whatever split you tell them to, exactly. and then you get what's left. Correct. You got now it. Now I get it. Okay. Yeah. Now I get it. Okay. So you got 1.6 and then you paid the expenses on the one six. And then what were you left with on that? Um, I walked away with 360 before taxes. My, that's what my business partner and, each, and I each walked away with last year. Okay, cool. So, so essentially 720, um, and uh, so 720 at, say, 2.3 or something, you know, 35%, 30%, something like that. And then, so what, um, what about now, do you include your personal production, these 59 homes? Yeah, that's included in that. That's included in that. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you put it all in the pot yes. and, then, and then you just take out at the end of the year, you know, you're 30 grand a month or whatever. Yeah, yeah. My, my partner and I, we, the, the decision that we make right now is we pay ourselves a split on our own transactions, um, even though, you know, we, we control 100% of the commission. But we, the only thing we pay ourselves on right now is a split on our own transactions. We have occasionally taken a little bit of profit out of the team. Um, but for right now in the growth stage that we're in, we, we really use that to keep building and growing. So, so you don't, so really, like technically, if you, got rid of the team, you would make the same amount of money. Um, no, I would actually make less because I'd have to pay my expenses. So what the team is doing is it's paying the expenses. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. So, the, okay. But, but overall the team is not a massive jackpot. I mean, what, what is your, what is your, yeah. Okay. What are your expenses? Do you think? Um, mm, roughly about uh, 15,000 a month. Okay. Well, a buck eighty. So, so yeah. Okay. So that that makes sense. So then that's kind of cool, right? And then your team pays all your expenses, so you're really on a hundred percent split. Right. Yeah. You know, um, okay. Cool. All right. So uh, let's talk a little bit about a couple of things you got going on here. First of all, um, you went into management for a while. I right. Did. You started out. We first met um, through Sherry Wilson. Uh, who uh, was a mentor of mine and a mentor of yours uh, way back in the day. And uh, you were killing it for her. I mean, you were just doing outstanding numbers. Um, yeah. And uh, you were what most people in the real estate business would call a great hire for someone to have on, on their team, right? Like yes, yes. perfect person. And um, so then you went, you, you know, I, I know you went to Century 21, then you went mm -hmm. and started managing and, Eventually, after managing, uh, you decided to get back in the business, right? I did. Yeah, that's right. I, I went into management really because I, I was quitting. I was I was so overwhelmed. I you know I, I you're right. I was a fabulous hire for Sherry. I learned a tremendous amount working for her. Um, but you know, eventually you graduate from those kind of models, right? And so I, I graduated. I, I kind of went out on my own at Century Twenty One, and I was doing really really well. And um, but what was happening was I didn't really understand how to structure a proper team for myself or um, I was not a great delegator. And so I was completely burned out and they came to me one day and said, Hey, you know, I'm sure you're not interested, but would you want to, you know, manage our, our offices? And 
I said, sure, because I thought that sounded really easy, right? You know, you show up at a certain time and you go home at a certain time. And um, it, it wasn't like that at all. So uh, two and a half years later, you know, several things happened. My mom died. So I needed to take on a, a, a bigger role at home, helping to take care of my dad. And so I just needed that flexibility of being in the field. And, and plus, I had learned the lesson that there is no substitute for working for yourself. I, I was not cut out to work for someone else anymore. And so that's what brought me here. Yeah, that's, I went through a similar sort of thing. I was a Keller Williams uh, regional director for seven months. And oh, wow. Yeah. I wasn't, it was set. So you lasted two and a half years. I only lasted seven months. So that's great. I mean, that's, it's hard. It's hard living your whole life, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Being yeah. the master of your destiny and yeah. then going in and trying to fit, you know, pegs in the holes. And it's, yeah. some people do it brilliantly. Some people, yeah. I mean, some people are very successful at doing that. Yes, you know, for other sure. People, other people aren't. So, so, okay. So talk to me about, what happened to your business mm -hmm. in that two and a half years? Did you pop out of there uh, yeah. from being a manager and you were like, Yahoo! And uh, <laughs> all these deals started rolling back because you had all these past clients, all these people you had touched with Cherry's team and mm -hmm. on your own in the mm -hmm. past? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was really interesting. This is a great lesson for um, the importance of consistency in your business because when I, I love, I track everything. So I can tell you how many leads I've received personally on my listings or referrals over the course of a year. And so in 2012, which is the year I stopped, I generated 695 leads during that year. And then I, I stopped, I shut down my business so that I went into management. I was not allowed to sell while I was managing. Um, I had a few transactions I had to finish up and um, I referred all of my business back into the brokerage. So the first year was not bad financially because I still had, you know, a good bit coming in. But when I stopped, when I stopped being engaged with my business, when I stopped being engaged with my database, I was just doing a very little bit in terms of, uh, you know, a mailing here and there to my database, to the top people in my database. And so two and a half years later, when I was ready to come back into the field, um, I only generated about 15 leads. Okay, so, so what, what's important for people to know, right, because we're not talking about the leads of today. Like the leads of today are what I call full leads, right? Mm -hmm. They're fake leads, right? Mm -hmm. They're not, they're not real leads. Like you're talking about yeah. real leads. Real lead. talk about, I mean, some people be like, Oh yeah, I could get, you know, uh, yeah. Yeah, 600 yeah, yeah. leads in a day. Right. Yeah. No, no, we're not talking about that. Tell me define leads at, per that era. Yeah. Yeah. So that yeah. wasn't that long ago. Right? That's an awesome point. No, you're absolutely right. Um, it, those leads were referrals that were coming in from my database. And my, those leads were past clients who were contacting me because they wanted to do business again. Those leads were signed calls on my listings. They were leads coming to me. You know, I've always been a listing specialist. It's what Sherry taught me. It's been my focus. Those were leads coming into me as a result of my listings, you know, as lead, of lead generation. It was not, you know, internet names and email addresses. Um, these were actually legit people in leads. Legit, legit listing referrals. Yeah. I mean, that's that that that's uh, at the end of the day, that's probably the best lead you can get, right? Is a listing referral. What? So, yeah. talk to me about the. Okay, so while we're on the subject of listing, so what? And because you were a listing agent for Sherry, mm -hmm. right? Um, what percentage of your business today is listings? Um, it's about 95%. Uh, last of the, year, of the 60 deals, right? Yeah. Yeah. So last year it was not quite that last year I did, um, I did nine buy sides last year, um, of the basically 60 leads that I did. I did uh, nine that were buy sides. Those were pretty much, you know, close, close clients and, and past clients and friends. This year I've done four, you know, one's a family member. One was myself personally. That was really intentional. <laughs> I really don't want to do many at all. <laughs> So, oh, okay. So a lot of people need to know this. So how do you do that? How do you, how do you maintain your focus on, um, 95% listings? Cause clearly you get buyer opportunity. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. It's scary. Actually, my business partner and I talk about this all the time because it's, it's frightening. You're, you're basically, you know, a lot of agents tend to be, you know, 50, 50 or 60, 40, one way or the other. So you're in essence giving away half of your business. But I made a very conscious decision that in order for me to be able to grow the listing side of my business the way that I wanted to, and in order for me to be able to grow the team in the way that I wanted to, I did not need to be out running around with buyers all the time. So um, I, when someone calls me and they're interested in 
um, purchasing a house, I say, great, let me connect you with one of my wonderful buyer's agents and they're going to be able to help you. Um, if it's someone that is buying and selling, I will list their home, but I let them know that I only work on the listing side and my, my team handles the buy side and I, I connect them with someone. And um, that's just how I do it. Okay. And, um, and so let's talk about this. So the, the five or so listing settlements that you have every month, Mm -hmm. right? Um, how much time do you personally spend a week uh, dealing with the listings, dealing with your business? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I would say about half of my day, some days more. Um, so, you know, I would say probably a good 15 to 20 hours, maybe, uh, okay. depending on what's going on. And how many hours do you think you'd spend a week if you had to do 60 some buyer deals a year? Oh my gosh, I would probably have to do three times that. If you think about the, the driving around, um, it's so much more time. Yeah. And therein lies the rub, right? Because as a mom of three kids, right? Yeah, yeah, you've exactly. got, you know, so much more time. Um, okay. And so where do, where do all these listings come from? Um, a lot. Uh, the, the highest percentage of my business still to this day, probably about 80%. It results from my database. It's um, repeat clients, it's past clients, it's referrals. Um, social media is, is the other big category for me. Um, you know, I broke down my business partner and I talk about the pillars in our business. These are the places where our business tends to come from. And so for us, it's, it's the sphere and past clients. It's social media. Facebook is very effective for me. Um, it's business to business networking. And then it's my geographic farm. I farm my entire zip code. I come from a small town. Uh, it's very rural and uh, I've lived there my whole life and I treat the whole, the whole zip code as my farm. Hey guys, as you know, my book, Six Steps to Seven Figures, has been a New York Times bestseller and a USA Today bestseller with over 30,000 copies sold to real estate agents and real estate investors alike. And uh, listen, I have decided to do something really special here. I am going to give away 200 copies. Yes, I'm going to give away 200 copies that I have. And all you need to do to get one is to go to free six steps book.com that's free six steps book.com all spelled out s-i-x steps book.com and you can fill out a form and all you need to do is pay the shipping and handling and i'm going to send you that book absolutely free or simply text the word pat to 444-999 my goal is for you to have this book if you haven't read it yet an absolute must for any real estate agent's library. Six Steps to Seven Figures, a real estate professional's guide to building wealth and creating your destiny. Just go to free six steps book.com and fill out the form and I will send it to you absolutely free. Or simply text the word PAT to 444-999. That's P-A-T to 444-999. Okay, so a couple of things. Tell us what exactly you do to farm your database, right? Mm -hmm. And what exactly you do to farm your zip code. Yeah, so um, so there's a lot of interplay in all of my pillars. There's a lot of, of interplay between each of the things. So we have a client care program that we use to you know to farm or to market to our database. Um, it, it's a very specific set of, of things that we set forth every year. Um, what we're doing currently is I we do an email every month. It's a drawing. It's some kind of a giveaway. I, you know my 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 personality, my mindset is one of generosity. So I I I know that if I give, I'm going to receive. You know twofold. So, um, so we're giving something as a thank you. Um, we do, we partner with a local business every month um, and we feature them and they do a special discount for our clients. So we send that out as a mailer. I like to hit multiple different um, types of media. I don't think you do just one. Um, so we've got the email, we've got the mailer. Um, we do a lot of pop buys, um, you know, little items of value, fun little, you know, kitschy things, um, you know, something cute that we, that we drop off at our client's house. Um, we, uh, we do mailers with, with some of those as well. Uh, we do multiple client events a year. We do two client events a year. We do a breakfast with Santa. We we're going to a brewery brewery in July. Um, and then we do reverse pop by events where people come to us, for example, for mother's day, 
I invited the moms in my database to come to my office. We had a little tea um, and uh, again, partnering with a local business because that's one of my pillars, right? Is the local businesses. And um, we gave them a, you know, a little potted plant or a little potted flower. Um, those are the things that we focus on primarily with my, our database, our past clients. Um, and then for my farm, there's social media ties into that as well. And so my farm is seeing a lot of that with me because I'm very active on social media locally. There's some local groups um, in my town that I'm always very active on. I get a lot of notifications. I set up intentionally notifications from those groups. So anytime someone posts and says, you know, who's the best painter or who's the best, you know, when we're in real estate, we know who all the best people are, right? Yep. Um, so I want to be the first person to respond always and say, you know, my clients or, you know, my seller recently had a great experience. So I do a little tie in back to real estate. So I become known as the person to reach out to when you're in need of something. And then we also do a mailer campaign about every other month. We do some kind of a postcard uh, to the farm. Uh, I sponsor a lot of community events, very high profile. Um, and, and that's what's worked really well for me. That's amazing. So, so like, for instance, the Mother's Day event, how many moms showed up? Uh, I think we had about maybe 30. Um, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a huge. This is our first year doing that event. No, but the 30 is huge. Yeah. You don't want to really hug that many more people, right? Because you've got to remember their names. You've got to chit-chat with them all, right? I mean, you've got to spend time with them. And look, it's not about the 30 who came. It's about the, you know, 100 or 200 that we invited, right? Because everybody who got um, invited felt really special that we thought of them and invited them. So even though they couldn't come, they were happy to be included. All right, cool. So, so you've got these referrals now, obviously, you know, these listing referrals, these high value leads yeah. um, also allow you to close more listings because they're not interviewing other agents. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, when you do compete with other agents, how yeah. do you win? Um, so I can tell you how I win. So uh, that, you know, again, being a tracker, um, I can tell you that on 2017, I went on 90 listing appointments. Wow. And I signed 67 listings. Um, there were only six that I didn't get. So there's certainly a percentage of people that, you know, they're not ready yet or, you know, they don't, they decide not to move. Um, so so I, I earn a very high percentage and I do compete a lot. So um, for me, my focus is, you um, leading right people are calling us in because not because they, they 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 want us to direct them and let them know you know what's happening in the market so i i'm very my personality is i'm very clear i'm very concise i like to lead the conversation i'm demonstrating to them my experience i'm demonstrating to them exactly what i'm going to do for them i break it down in such a way i love it when i'm competing because i ask who i'm competing against and then I always share the differences um, in which I may be able to handle things differently than, than, than another person that they're talking to. Um, and it works really effectively for me. Okay, so this is good stuff. So um, first of all, you ask who you're competing against, yes. which a lot of people say to do, but don't do themselves because they chicken out. So right. when do you do this? you do this on the phone or do you wait till you're there and just bring uh, it? It depends. So I never, when I'm on the phone with someone, I never ask them if they're going to be interviewing other agents because I don't, if they did not think to interview, I don't want them to think that's something that they should do. Right. Okay. Um, but if, if, you know, I try to ask some questions in that conversation about, you know, what are your next steps or what are you thinking just so I can figure that out. If I find that out on the phone, um, then I pull data from our MLS and I go in with the data. This is, these are my stats. This is this other person's stats. Um, and if I'm just working on the fly and I find out there at the table that this is what they're doing, um, then I, you know, I always am very complimentary. I, I am very much a professional. Um, I am very respectful always. Um, but I will point out some differences, you know, that I'm, I'm sure this person is really wonderful. I've not heard of them before. Um, you know, and I've been around for a really long time and I'm, I'm connected to thousands of agents through my women's group. So um, because I've not heard of them, that, that might mean that maybe they don't do a lot of business. So that's a question you want to ask them. So, so that's kind of the way I'm, I'm sort of directing things when I'm having that conversation. Okay, so this is a great conversation because I think the, um, the conversation about uh, exact data and, and how you direct a conversation with other agents is changing. For years, I was taught, and I know a lot of people were taught, you know, don't bash other agents or bash is a bad word. Or don't, it's a rookie mistake to say anything negative or to even try to get into it and that sort of thing. And um, 
I think a lot of that is changing. It's very interesting how it's changing. Um, and you've obviously taken a different approach. So you will actually show them the stats of the other agents. Now, what stats are you showing them? Um, I focus on the things that are most important to the seller, which are days on market, how long their house is going to be on the market, which ultimately affects your sales price. I, uh, I use average sales price as a percentage of list price so they can see, you know, how, um, you know, how, how skilled is this person at, at setting prices, number one, how good are they at negotiating, that's what that stat tells you. Um, a lot of these listings are in my farm. You know, last year I sold 59 homes and 25 of them were in my farm. So if, it, if it's in my farm, which a lot of, of times it is, then I'm showing specifically my, you know, this is what I've done in the farm and this person has only, you know, sold two. Um, and so that, that's a very effective stat as well. And what else? What, how else can you be specific against an agent? Let's say you didn't know, you were sidetracked, you're on a listing appointment, mm -hmm. but they're talking to two formidable opponents. Yeah. Um, so it depends on who the person is. Um, you know, commission is not something that we're supposed to talk to, talk about, but, um, you know, that's always a hot topic, what's being offered to buyer's agents. Um, call me old school, but I feel pretty strongly about what you offer to a buyer's agent. And um, a lot of people in our market don't necessarily subscribe to that any longer, um, especially maybe some of the bigger names sometimes you'll see. And so that's often something that I can use you know, this person is known for offering, uh, you know, this amount versus this amount. And so that's and so, so you're implying that the other realtors don't like that person. Um, not that they don't like that person, but that that particular tactic in my experience is going to um, limit traffic on their home and could affect uh, the ability to sell it. And I, and I guess it works. I guess it works best if mm -hmm. you're both offering the same commission from the beginning, mm -hmm. right? So if you're both offering Y and they're offering less on the co-op, it makes it seem like you're more generous. Yes, exactly. But if, if you're, you know, if they're actually cutting them a break by that amount, mm -hmm. It's, it's a harder battle, right? Well, but even if they're cutting the break, um, I will cut the break on my side. And, you know, I had a couple of experience. And, again, it all boils down to personal experiences. And I love okay, to. Wait a minute. So let me slow that down. So what yeah. she said is she's, she's looking for exacts. She's asking what is this person going to co-op or trying to figure out, hey, this person usually co-ops this. And then she deduces from that, mm -hmm. hopefully, you know, by asking them what the full commission they offered was. If, if they were cutting them a break or not, and you say, say here's what I'm going to do. Yeah. I'll offer more to the, to the other agent and less to myself, yes. but my fee will be the same as your competitor. Correct. And then it makes that person look greedier and you look more generous. Totally right. And yeah. you're absolutely right. And, and um, you know, I love to use storytelling um, when I'm communicating with people because I think they can relate to it. You know, there's a lot of terms and things that we use. You know, if I say co-op to a, to a seller, they have no clue what I'm talking about. They don't about. get it. That's the thing. They don't they get, get it. it. Like, all yeah. they think about is that whatever number you say, mm -hmm. that's what it means to them. It's almost, yes. it's almost sad, right? Yeah. Like, because yeah. Like if it was me personally, you know, I, you know, the dollar amount, like, what was it? 10,000, 20,000. That's really what's important. But in, in, in the world, it works to our benefits as agents that, that they only see commission uh, percentages. Right. So when you talk about co-op or what you're offering to other agents, they're like, I don't know anything about that. Right. I don't right. Know, whatever. Right. So it, go ahead. People are selfish, right? At the end of the day, I mean, it doesn't matter. They what they care about is how it affects them, and and so what I like to do is demonstrate how that particular, how the sharing of that commission affects them, because that's what they care about. And you know, it might be great if you're going to make X number of dollars less, um, you know, in terms. So so that the priority is is do you want to pay a lower commission or do you want a higher sales price? And and ultimately, it's the higher sales price is what you want. And, and, and the two can sometimes be mutually exclusive. So what stories do you use? For um, so for example, when I was a managing broker, I had a couple of experiences where agents in my office, their buyer agency agreement specified that they received a certain amount and they held firm to that amount. And so um, when a buyer wanted to see a property that was offering less than the amount in their agreement, they would either not show it 
um, or it were, and this was a very awkward calls I had to make, um, they would require the buyer to pay the difference. And so, you know, imagine if you are a buyer's agent and your agreement says one thing and this listing this buyer wants to see is, is something else. And you say to that buyer, you know what, if you recall, our agreement says this, they're offering that, that means you're going to have to pay this. Do you still want to go see that house? And what is the buyer going to say? You know, a lot of times they're going to say no. Right. Um, so, so that that's one of my favorite stories to tell. Yeah, and and guess what? That happens. That's a that's yeah. a that's a, that's happening. No, it's totally real. Yeah, it's Absolutely. totally real now. And as agents, we have to make a decision. Yeah. Are we going to be that agent? Or are we going to be? Um, right you know, the one that says, well, let's, let's just let the chips fall where they may and, and all the commissions, you know, will result in an income to me that hopefully is happy at the end of the year. Which stance do you take? Well, I mean, for me, it's always the big picture, right? And so I, when it comes to my business, I, I'm always focusing more on the big picture than on the individual transactions. You know, for example, recently, I, you know, I have a, a closing today where I'm making $1,000 I'm still offering that very nice commission to the buyer's agent because this person was going to be a for sale by owner. And um, that was the only way for me to get it. And I really wanted this listing because it's in my farm. It's a great location. It's an excellent spot for a sign. And so I know that I can take that one transaction and I can turn that into, you know, three, five, 10 more transactions where I think the mistake a lot of agents make is they look at that one transaction and they go, Oh, I can't do this. I'm going to be negative money, but they're not looking at the big picture of their business. I'm in it for the long haul. Yeah, no, I, I, I think that's great. You know, I used to take listings that I knew wouldn't sell were overpriced um, just because they were, you know, million dollar listings. And I wanted to be able to say, you know, I had million dollar listings. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's okay. You know, right. uh, you, okay. you got to think abundantly and big. So let, let's talk about your women's group. Tell me about that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so when I was a managing broker, I uh, started a group called Empowering Women in Real Estate. Uh, we're on Facebook. We're, we're expanding into some other things now. And uh, we've got uh, close to 6,800 women across the country that are members of this group. And, and really my whole idea behind starting this group is you know, our business is a, is a lonely business. We work with people all day, um, but but people don't tend to understand what we do. And so I thought, you know, gosh, if I'm feeling this way, I'm sure that there's other people in business who are feeling this way as well. And so it's really become a great, um, it's kind of become therapeutic for me. You know, I write a couple times a week and uh, we do monthly meetups in multiple cities. We have about nine cities typically, um, mostly on the East Coast right now that will meet uh, once a month, we talk about a particular topic. Um, it's just a, a very good, supportive uh, network for women. That's great. So um, what blog article or, or, or writing piece that you put in there would you say probably generated the most conversation? Um, you know, I think when I am very... Um, I always talk about, you know, from my own personal point of view, and when I am talking about typically my failures a lot of times you know people tend to they see people in our in the business who are successful and there's a couple of assumptions that they make the assumptions are they never fail they always win uh, the assumptions are well they're just lucky what they don't see is the 16 years of work that I've done to get to where I am today and yes I do still fail I you know I lose listings I lose clients just like everybody else and so um, when I have those types of posts um, it, those tend to get the most response and, and the most reaction going because people are, um, they can relate to it so much. And I think it's comforting to see that, you know, people who have, you know, reached certain levels of success experience the same things. What do you think about the word toolbox? What is a toolbox? A toolbox is a box full of tools that you use to build something great. At Real Estate Rockstars, we've created our own free toolbox. So everybody that comes on the show as a guest brings a tool with them and we plow them all into this toolbox and we give it away for our viewing audience to basically use as they wish. Everything we put in there is an actionable item that can be downloaded, can be printed, can be used immediately. And we got things like scripts and dialogues, checklists for teams, checklists to keep agents accountable, referral forms that are filled out at settlement to get referrals by your buyers and sellers. Everything you could think of that you could use on a regular basis 
about real estate is included in this toolbox and it's helping agents worldwide sell more houses and make their jobs a lot easier and processes much more efficient and the thing is it's absolutely free all you got to do is go to hybendigital.com backslash toolbox or text the word toolbox to 444-999 that's toolbox 444-999 do it now that's authenticity right and yeah. and, and and you're right people <clears throat> people will like you more for being a, a, a real human being than they will for being you know someone that you know you you would think people would look up to you know what i mean i mean they it's, it's today it's the opposite of what you would think and that's why you see so many celebrities coming out like mariah carey coming out and saying hey i'm, I'm you know manic depressive or whatever and and right. You know, I have this and different people coming out all the time and saying, you know, I'm going to inspire other people, other women, that sort of thing by being authentic yes. and letting people know that it's okay. You right. Know? Exactly. Well, and it's scary too, because when, when you do show that, that vulnerability, right, you do show that you have failures and you have shortcomings and, it, you know, it can be scary because you think, oh, well, people aren't going to think as highly of me or um, they're not going to find me as successful, but really what it does is it, it, it just demonstrates the, the, the true measure of the person that you are when you're able to, to, to share the things that other people experience too. I love it. I love it. Um, okay, great. So <clears throat> let's talk about uh, you training your agents. What do you do to train these, you know, 23 other moms yeah. <laughs> to make them as successful as you? What, do, what are you teaching them on a regular basis? Yeah, so we are, we are big accountability fans. We've become more and more about accountability as, as time has gone on with our team. And um, consistency is probably the one thing that, that I can say that throughout my career has helped me the most. Is What has? Consistency. Being consistency, consistent. yes. Yes, because agents will try something and they don't get an immediate result and nothing gives you an immediate result and then they quit and then they bounce over and they try something else and then they buy this and they think that's going to do it. Um, so consistency is key. And so, so what we do with our agents is we... On our team, we centralize the marketing. So our team is a little bit different. We pay high splits on our team. We want this to be a team where um, people can come and they can grow. You know, one of the experiences I saw with one of my early teams is um, the splits were low. It was a great learning ground. But when you graduated, you moved on because, you, you know, you could do more on your own. So we, we teach them how to stay in touch with their business, how to stay in touch with their database. We teach them how to fish for themselves. It's not about, um, we do provide some leads, but that's not the, that's not the basis of our business. Uh, it's certainly a revenue stream for us, right? Team leads, we can, we can charge a little bit more on. Um, but really the, the focus is teaching them how to, um, to provide that client experience where they're going to get the repeat clients. They're going to get the referrals like, like we have. And, and like accountability is key, right? So how do you keep them all accountable? That is so hard because not everybody wants to be held accountable, right? right. You know, most people don't, I think. You know? They don't. Um, they don't. And so that's where, you know, this year we've been, we've been hitting that a lot harder. And so we're definitely getting a little pushback on that. So, um, so a couple of different things, you know, I, I believe in leading by example. Um, we use a CRM. Um, we use referral maker. It's, it's a Brian Buffini product. Um, it works really nicely. And so we have certain tasks. I have certain, you know, I call my business builders that I do every day. Um, and, you know, everybody on the team, we, we um, encourage them to, to have identified because, you know, we set a goal and then we never look at that goal again, typically. And so what we've done is we have taken the goal that our agents want to achieve and we have specifically tied it to the action steps that they need to take in order to achieve that goal, right? Because if you're going to get there, you got to do the work. Um, so their daily tasks relate to the steps that they need to take that are going to get them to their goal. And so each day we share, sometimes I'm the only one who shares it because nobody else, either they're not tracking it or they're not doing it or they don't want to share it. Um, once a month, we, um, at our team meeting, everybody has to share how many contacts have they made, how many face-to-face -face appointments have they had, um, how many transactions do they have closed or pending. Um, quarterly, we review our goals. We, um, we have a yeah, you know, we do an annual retreat every year. So there's a lot of things like that that we do just to kind of keep everybody on track. And, and tell me about Referral Maker. Like, what, what does it show? How, how, what do you implement? And 
-hmm. What's good for you? Yeah, so it's it's the best CRM that I've ever used, um, and I've used many over the years. Um, it's very simple, um, but very effective. It allows me to set my goals based on what are my tasks that I want to do on a daily or weekly basis. So for me, for example, um, every day I strive to write three notes, make three calls, um, do one pop by, give one referral, because it's all about giving, uh, give one referral, add one person to my database and have one face-to-face -face appointment. So if I achieve all those tasks in my day, I've won the day. Uh, and of course, you know, you roll those up over the course of the week and you can, you can win the week. Um, so it allows me to track those very easily. Um, it, you know, my whole database is in there. There's a lot of things it does that, frankly, I don't even tap into. I try to focus on what my, my biggest need is right now, and, and, and that's it. Yeah, that's great. It kind of gamifies it a little bit. Yeah. You know, do you give yourself a prize or, or, or have a penalty if you don't win the day or win the week? Uh, I don't, I don't, but I, I am, my personality is such that um, I want to win always. And so um, I will often not stop for the day until I've done my tasks. And, and really the reality of the situation is that, you know, it's prospecting is, is what it is basically. Um, and we tend to not prioritize it. So I try to do it first thing in the morning. If I haven't done it, then, you know, I don't, I don't, I'll try not to shut off my computer until it's done. That doesn't happen every day, but I definitely do it by the end of the week. I'll catch up at some point. Yeah. So we started down a path about um, how, you know, your leads drop significantly and then we got sidetracked. And I want to get back to that because I experienced a similar thing. You know, I thought, you know, people automatically assume and I talk to people about selling their businesses all the time, right? Selling their real estate teams all the time. And I sold my real estate team <clears throat> to my partner, <clears throat> excuse me, Mike Sloan in 2010 and uh one of the things that happened was every single year that passed, I was giving less and less referrals to him and the team, right? Mm -hmm. And um, when I wasn't there, when I was there, it was very easy for past clients and da 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 to come in and whether I worked them or not, and I didn't, but at the time, you know, I would at least hand them off to somebody and they stood a really good chance of sticking with the team. Right. Um, just the fact that I was there to maybe chat with them, to maybe send them an email saying thank you, that sort of thing, and to focus on mailing them stuff, you know, keeping in touch with them, that sort of thing, was a lot more important actually than I thought because what happened was, you know, it, it only took two or three years and it was all, they were almost all dissipated and started listing with other agents or going with other agents. Mm -hmm. um, even though, you know, he still kept the team name. So I, I want you to address that and, yeah. and why it's important for agents to know this. Yeah. That happened to you too. It did. It did. And, you know, I don't know, we talk about this all the time and, and I, you know, you and I both learned from Sherry and, and Sherry did it brilliantly when she was engaged in the business you know, she wasn't there. She wasn't going on appointments. She wasn't actively involved in the transactions. Um, but her, her name was built up to be such a brand that people came in. But then of course, what happens is when people are, they, they might come initially because of her, but then maybe they work with me or they would work with someone else. And then later on when they, they needed to do something again, they're not referring the team leader's name, right? They're, they're referring the person that they worked with. And so, and so that happens very naturally. There, there's a, so much competition in our industry. I mean, especially in my area, you know, like every fourth person has a real estate license. And so, um, you know, it, it can be a really a, a big challenge. Um, I don't know what the answer is for how you keep that going. I mean, I, I learned the lesson very clearly. I learned that you can build it back up once you re-engage. Um, it's all a snowball effect, you know, the, you know, more business begets more business begets more business. Um, but you got to be in it and you got to be doing it consistently. Um, I'm not sure how to keep it going when you stop that I have not mastered yet. It, you know, what it boils down to actually is you have to call the people, right? Somebody yeah, has right. to be calling the people, yeah. whether it's the rainmaker, whether it's Sherry, me, you, whatever. It, I don't think it matters so long as somebody's following up saying, I'm calling on behalf and, and I've talked to three or four agents that have sold teams mm -hmm. and the ones that worked well, <clears throat> there was a period of time where they did stuff together where mm -hmm. it would have been like, you know, Hey, you know, this is Mike Sloan. Pat asked me to call you or I would call actually for a year mm -hmm. and being like, Hey, you know, um, 
I'm selling my business to my partner, Mike. He's going to be talking to you. He's going to be following up with you mm -hmm. um, for a certain period of time. And then the new person follows up as a representative of the team or a representative of the business. So both have to happen yes. uh, aggressively. You know, they're not, the people aren't just going to come. Mm -hmm. You know, they just don't. Yeah. They just yeah. They just don't. So. Well, they don't because, you know, there was a stat I heard once that, I don't know, it was like NAR or something, that people forget you're a realtor every 17 days. So if you are not consistent, <laughs> right? So if you are not consistently engaging with them by calling them or mailing them or emailing them, they don't remember. You know, they're, they're busy. People are in their lives doing other things. And so if they don't have an immediate real estate need or somebody in their space doesn't have an immediate real estate need, they're not really thinking about you. So you have to be constantly doing those kind of things to, to keep people engaged with you or else they're going to go to whoever's in their path because people are being, you know, one of the things that, that we've talked about a lot this year is, you know, we need to engage with our own database. We need to engage with our own sphere because if we're not, you know, other people are, you know, I, we all get the mailers in the mail and the, you know, the, the email, the, the things in our social media feed where people are boosting posts from other agents. And so other people are marketing to our clients. If we're not marketing ourselves to them, eventually they're going to find somebody else. hundred percent, hundred percent. Okay. So um, let's wrap this up with our flagship question is that, and that is this Karen, let's say that I took you and I took nine other real estate agents and I put you all in an area that, the one thing that you all have in common is none of the 10 people know anyone, right? Mm -hmm. Now there's people buying and selling things, spending money, buying and selling houses here. And I'm going to put a $5 million prize, right? Whatever real estate agent sells the most houses within six months wins $5 million cash. But the only thing you start with is a thousand bucks and a cell phone. How are you going to win that $5 million? I'm going to start by, by immersing myself in the community and connecting with the community because people want to work with people that they know, like, and trust. So a print ad's not going to do it. Um, I need to be out there meeting people, going into other businesses, letting them know that, you know, hey, I have a real estate business. How can I help you? Can I promote you? Um, and getting to know people in that way, um, becoming known as um, as the resource of the resource. I think that's one of the, the, the great things that we as agents have the opportunity to do because people only buy a house once every, you know, three, five, 10 years. Um, but when you're the resource of the resource, they're coming to you consistently. So um, I need to, to establish my group that, that are my resources and then promote myself as that. Um, and just getting to know people that way is, is how I would, I would get my business going. I love that. Be the resource of the resource and make that, you know, one of your primary goals is to be the resource of the resource, right? Yeah. So people yeah. are calling you. So you're, yeah. they're always thinking, of, oh, you know who no Karen would that, Exactly. Right? That, that's exactly what I want. Is, and I get it all the time. People will email me. People will call me. People will text me, you know, because they, they have that, that. I have positioned myself in such a way. And so when people say, oh, you know, we need to change our counters or somebody the other day, my window broke. They, who, would, who would know somebody? Karen would know somebody. Um, and that's what I want. That's awesome. Okay, so let's talk about your free gift. Now, what free gift are you bringing all our rock star listeners today? Uh, yeah, so what we put together is I'm sharing something that we did for our team last year, and I also sold this in Empowering Women as part of a package that we did. Um, and it's basically a goal-setting formula. We're all about the goals, but you can't just set the goal. You have to also understand the steps that you're going to have to take to achieve that goal. Um, and so we put together a formula last year based on, you know, I've told you about all about my data. Um, so we've, I've taken my personal data and I've used that to come up with a formula that if you want to achieve, you know, 50 transactions in a year, then you're going to roughly need to contact X number of people, um, you know, with calls, notes, or pop buys, you're going to have to go on this many appointments in order to achieve that goal. So uh, it's a whole little worksheet with information, and uh, that's what I have provided. That's beautiful. So I'm going to put that on hybendigital.com backslash Karen Cooper and the number two. That's hybendigital.com backslash Karen Cooper and the number two. I'm also going to put all of Karen's contact information, guys. If you want to reach out to her, if you want to join the Facebook group, Empowering Women in real estate. Now, is that free to join? It is. Yeah. No cost to join. Okay. I'm going to put a link uh, in the show notes there, guys. So you could go or you could just go to Facebook and type in what? Empowering women in real Empowering estate. In real estate. It'll come up. Mm -hmm. It'll come up. And, and, um, and all that'll be there. I'm also going to put a 
copy of uh, her goal setting guide in the agent success toolbox, which will be on hybendigital.com backslash toolbox, or you can text the word toolbox to 444-999. Again, hybendigital.com backslash Karen Cooper, the number two. Karen, this has been awesome. Thanks for sharing everything. Best of luck to you. If I'm ever in Leesburg, Virginia in the coming years, I'll uh, look you up and we'll get together and break some bread. Oh, I hope you will. Thank you so much, Patty. It was great to talk to you today. You too. Thank you so much for tuning in to Real Estate Rockstars. If this free content is giving you a ton of value, I want to ask a small favor in return. I need you to pull out your pointing finger and hit the subscribe button. Yes, hit subscribe, please. The more subscribers that we get on Real Estate Rockstars, the better guests are attracted to the shows. We'll get more guests from the top companies, from the top teams, and even more celebrity guests like Robert Kiyosaki and Barbara Corcoran. Also, if you're not a member of our free Facebook group, go to Real Estate Rockstars Radio right on Facebook and join the conversation. I'm on there myself on FaceTime Lives, and we have a lot of communications and questions about the show, and I'd love to see you there. And it's free. People ask me all the time, where am I on social media? I'm real easy to find. Just type in my name. My IG is I am Pat Hyben. It is blowing up on Instagram, adding tons of subscribers. And I'm on there probably twice a day. So definitely follow me on Instagram as well as everywhere else. Thanks again for listening and keep rocking.